Well, hello there. The Father's Day is coming up and we're all thinking what to get for our fathers. Well, as a full-stack software engineer with five years of experience, I have created a website that you can send to your father and uh, I'll be also showing you how we can create it. And uh, let me show you how it looks like. So here right now we can see it's on my local machine. Uh, and what we have out here is just saying Happy Father's Day, dad joke, and some sort of a say here, some sort of a dad joke out here. If I were to refresh the page right now, we can see that Confitil appears, uh, the joke has changed, and uh, after a couple of seconds, those Confitils will uh, disappear. And uh, on top of that, uh, I have deployed it this website into a specific URL. And uh, I'll leave that URL in the description below so you can guys can click on, send it to your fathers uh, in case you're still thinking what to get. And uh, that's it. So we'll be building that today using uh, Next.js. Uh, we'll be also learning how we can talk to a different APIs. Uh, so in this case, as you can see, whenever we refresh the page, uh, the text is changing. So we'll be doing that. Um, also, how do you uh, install specific package? So here we have, you can see uh, 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 Confitil that we have uh, running every time we refresh the page. There is something that I didn't build from scratch. I didn't build myself. I'm just using, using somebody else's package. I like to use other people's wheels. Easy life. And uh, the last thing what we'll be doing is actually we'll be deploying it to our uh, Netlify. So I'll be showing that as well. Okay, uh, let's get started. So let me stop that project right now and the, let's create a new project from scratch. So let's go ahead and go to Nux.js uh, documentation. So if you type in nuxjs.org, uh, it will take you to this website. Uh, let's click on docs, uh, installation, scroll down just a little bit and copy paste this line over here, yarn create Nux app. Uh, space and let's give a project name. So let's give Father's Day, for example. Okay, let's click on enter. Okay, so it's running. Choo, choo, choo. There you go, successfully created it. And that's going to ask us a few questions about the project, like project name. I'm just going to press on enter. Uh, I want to go with JavaScript, uh, yarn. Uh, this one UI framework is uh, how, what framework do, do you want to use to style your website? I'll be going with Tailwind CSS. Uh, press on spacebar to select specific ones or unselected. Uh, in our case, we're just going to go with Axios. Press enter. Uh, then we'll need AS Lint and uh, Prettier to make our lives easier. Testing frameworks, uh, we don't need any one of them, so just press on none. Uh, single page application, uh, deployment target. Uh, that, that one's just going to be a static Jamstack hosting. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. Let's just go with the uh, server Node.js hosting. Uh, next one is uh, go with uh, select JS config. That's all we need. Um, so in my case, I have already connected my previous project to my uh, GitHub account. So I'm not going to be connecting this one. I'll be just showing you on my different on my different project there. But in your case, as you're setting up, make sure you select a GitHub uh, actions. I'm just going to go with uh, none. And after that, uh, select uh, version control git. In my case, I'm just going to go with none. I don't want to keep on deploying uh, projects. And that's going to create for us. Uh, okay, so now uh, let's do ls. So here I have a project that was created. So I'm going to go to cd uh, father's day. Okay. And what I'm going to do right now is code space dot. That just going to open up for me a new uh, window, new uh, VS Code window. That's nice for us. That's really, really good. And what I'll do right now is I'm just going to run yarn dev. Okay. By running yarn dev, I can see the link will appear. If I'll do control click, um, so I guess it's still loading. It's still loading. Uh, there we go. Okay. So 
first step has been completed successfully, and that is running, creating a Next.js project. So if you were to create any type of a project using Next.js, this is how you'll go about it. And if you see this page right now, that means it's working. Oh, and by the way, if you're getting value out of this video right now, don't forget to click that subscribe button and the like. What we want to do right now is we want to make it look like exactly like what we have here. How do we do that? Well, let's go to our index. We're well, already on our index.view file. It's under pages. And uh, what we want to do is delete this logo. And this logo is a component, which is coming from components we can see right here. And uh, if I were to also delete this part because we don't need, don't need it, save it, go back. Um, okay, we can see that we have cleaned up unnecessary things from our project. And of course, what I'm going to say there is Happy Father's Day. Since I already have that written, I'm just going to copy paste, but you're going to have to type it out. Or maybe copy paste from the website I already posted. Uh, okay, so that's done. And if we go back, it's there. It's there. Uh, so that's good. First step is done. Clean up the project, have those things. So the next thing what we want to do is to install our plugin to see those confetti. So the website that I'll be using uh, is on NPM and the package name is view confetti. And I'll leave a link to it in the description below so you can guys also just click on it. And uh, what I'll do right now is I'll go into installation process. So here I can see yarn add. So I'll just open up a new uh, terminal, paste that in here. Boop. So the project has been installed. And how do I know if it's been installed? Well, I'll just go into my package.json and take a look at my dependencies. And there we go. I can see that it's been installed successfully. Awesome. OK, um, next thing. If I'll scroll down into the documentation of setting up, so I can see here is usage. How do I use it? That's nice. OK, and here's the usage with Nuxt. This is exactly what I want. So here I can see is some uh, setting up process for me. So I can see right now my repo. So that's my project. I can see under plugins, they have this file called view confetti. So that's the first thing I will do right now. I will just copy the name, go back to my project, look for plugins, right click, new file, paste.js at the end. And the uh, first step is done. I have created uh, a file. And uh, those three lines of code, so we have import view confetti, from confetti, view use, that's what goes into this file. Let's save that. Nice. OK, next thing is register your plugin. So every time you are uh, installing a new plugin into your uh, project, into your Nux project, you have to tell the application that where it is so it knows that uh, what to look for. And uh, what we'll do right now is copy this line. And let's go to our Nux config file. So let's look for it. Nux config file, there it is. So have our header, meta tag, link, CSS, plugins. Let's paste it over here, save it. Nice. So that's done. If we go back to our website right now, refresh the page, uh, nothing is working. I mean, nothing is happening. It's working, but confetti is not appearing, which is nice, or which is fine, because we haven't used it yet within our project. So let's go back to their uh, documentation and see how we can uh, use it. So I can see they have method, start, stop, love. So let's see if it's working for us, the plugin. So I'm going to copy this one liner, which is a button start. Come back here, put it over here. Boop. And let me copy this start method as well. Come back here, method, save. OK, let's go back to the project. The button is there. If I click on start, they appear. That's awesome. That means that our installation process and setting up went successfully. So now we can do things with it. So let's go back. And actually, let's go back to an example of what we have here. So here I already have uh, this project, right? And if I were to refresh the page, um, we can see that 
it's happening automatically by itself, right? As soon as I visit the application and after a couple of seconds, they just disappear or they're gone. They stop falling. So that's the type of effect we should go for right now. How do we do that? Well, luckily for us in Nuxt.js, we have a different type of a method called uh, mounted. And what a mounted is, is type of a function that's called on the life cycle of when the page has been loaded. So every uh, project, every uh, framework has a life cycle and uh, mounted appears on when the project has been loaded, the way the page has been loaded. What that means is that if I'll come back here again, uh, just type in console.log uh, hello world. If I press on save, come back to the project, inspect, console. Right now we have nothing in there. If I were to refresh the page, oh, that's the wrong one. Inspect. Uh, oh, let's clean this up, refresh the page. And there we go. We can see that hello world has appeared. Awesome. Now, what does it mean? It means that this little piece of code should probably go into mounted. So let's do that. Let's uh, copy this. Let's delete console log, put it over here. Oh, in fact, instead of putting that over there, oh, let's do this, this dot start. We're just gonna call this dot start uh, function there, our method. And if we were to go back, refresh the page, um, it's working beautifully. It is calling our start function on load, which means that we don't need this button anymore. We can just delete it from there. Now, this is fine, right? We are calling this uh, method and we're able to do things with it, but that's not exactly still what we want. What we want is put some sort of a timer into it. Well, in JavaScript, we have this thing called set interval, okay? And the set interval takes in two parameters, two arguments, as we can see here. Um, so we have a set interval, we have a callback, so we have a, a void function here that we can call. And then we can see that here we can pass in an argument, uh, any, can be an any array, okay, number, I see, that's good. So which means that this second argument is going to be our uh, timer. So let's set to 8,000. This is an easy thing to do, so let's do that first. Next. What we're gonna do is uh, we need to call our stop function because it needs to stop after a specific time. Because right now we have a start time and after uh, 8,000 milliseconds, uh, it's gonna stop for us. So let's go back into documentation. Let's copy this, or in fact, let's copy this stop uh, method. Let's put it over here. And let's call the this dot stop methods in here. Save that. Let's go back to our website. So, okay, right now we can see, so far it's good. It's running for us. Um, falling, falling. Oh, there we go. It stopped. That's good. That means that right now we're in the right path. So, this is the second step. Second step has been accomplished. Check mark. In terms of setting up uh, a package, using it, and uh, implementing it in a way that we want. We have a control over this package right now. Uh, we can see right now that here yeah, we have those two methods. That's exactly what we copy paste from their website right now. And we can see here on inside of our mounted uh, function, we have this code. Now, this can be improved a little bit because for now we have a start, stop, and this is one type of functionality to make our confetti to fall, right? So. What can we do in this case? Well, we can still put this into a different function too, but that's decoupling, that's something else. That's not the point of this video. In this video, we're just doing little things for now. So that's done for us. Congratulations, two steps are done. Next thing what we wanna do is we want to take a break. Oh, by the way, have you read this book, Zero to One? It's a really good book. I'll post the... Uh, uh, a link to it in the description below. I got it a few days ago. I'm already like half of it, half done with it. 
And uh, it's a very, very good book in terms of how to run business, I guess. I don't know. Something's been recommended. So I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not to read it? It has some cool pictures of it. You can see it has, uh, sorry, what page am I on? 119. You can see it has Steve Jobs in there, Bill Gates in there. Cool. Uh, yeah. I was on this page. Okay. I probably read like one word. Um, start. Okay, let's get back to work. So those things are done, but what is missing still from us? From us? Well, we can see that we still need that joke to appear in there, right? So how do we do that? Well, let's go back to our code. Let's do a very, very simple thing first. And that is putting our p tag in there. Okay, and uh, what we're going to say in there is, uh, where is it? Oh, it's right here. That joke. Save that. Cool. There you go. There is our that joke. So what I want to do right now is we want to get those jokes from uh, this specific uh, API. So again, those jokes, they're not my jokes. These are their jokes. And uh, if you were to go to this website right now, I will leave a link to it as well. If you were to go to API, uh, and you'll see examples here. So we can see endpoints, uh, fetch a random that joke. Uh, you can fetch a random that joke as a Slack message, uh, fetch a that joke. So you can get specific one by ID. So you can see you have a lot of options of what you can do, or you can even fetch as an image. Hmm, that's kind of cool. But in any case, what we want is we just want a random that joke. So what do we do? Well, we need to talk to this uh, API by creating a method. So if I go to methods, I come here. So since I'll be fetching data, I already know there's going to be async await process. It's either me using async await or promises. If you're not sure what those things are, let me know in the description below. I can describe it to you a bit more closely or maybe create uh, uh, another video about that. Oh, and by the way, if you're getting value out of this video, don't forget to like it, like this video, and subscribe to the channel because it helps. And uh, what else do we do from here? And uh, right, so we're creating a sync uh, function and we're gonna call it get uh, that joke. Okay, and uh, we're going to be creating a const uh, variable. The reason why it's going to be const variable is because, uh, well, it's either const or let. And for us, it's just const because that value will never be changing. Uh, we're going to make it, we're going to say as a joke equals to uh, fetch. Oh, by the way, sorry. So since we will be, we'll be using fetch method, this is where it's going to be uh, await method. So we have async await function, uh, fetch, and we can see fetch has two parameters. Number one is input request information. Okay. Second one is request init. Have no idea what this means. All what I know is that the first parameter should be URL. Second one is going to be an object. We're going to inside say headers. Okay. It's going to be another object. And this is what we'll be passing in our headers. So if we go back to a website again, we can see we have here dot dash h accept application json. So I'm going to just copy that, paste it in here. And uh, let me put this into a single column. Save that. Really? OK, in any case. Um, so we have that. Now what we need is our URL. So if I come back here, type in const URL equals to this. Okay. So we have URL here. We have our joke of variable here. And now this joke will contain our values. Now here's one thing though. Since we're using fetch, we're getting data. It's a JSON. Whenever we do that, we always need to say dot then res short for result. So that's what we'll be getting. And we actually need to convert this into our JSON format. Uh, there are multiple ways 
of how we can do that. Uh, as soon as you have your a joke, you can do it on the joke uh, itself, uh, or you can do it on then. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and what we're gonna do is joke dot JSON. Save that. Okay. And if I to come back here right now again, do console log uh, joke. Save that. Oops. Actually, there's a typo. It should be a res. Save that. And uh, all right, I'm not calling the function. I'm not calling the function. I should probably call that too. So what are we going to do right now? Uh, let's call it here. Oh, and by the way, since this function is a sync function, our mounted function needs to be uh, await. Oh, oops, a sync, sorry. A sync function, since we're calling uh, await a sync, yeah. So it has to follow the rule. A sync, await, there we go. Okay, uh, yeah, so it's good now. Let's test this baby out. Let's refresh this. It's complaining. I think it's because it doesn't know about this function. If I put in this, do you think it will work? I think it will work. Oh, it works. Oh, look at us. It actually works beautifully. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, what do we have here? We do have our, as we can see, ID for the joke, a joke a string, and then the status 200. 200 status means success, which is a good thing. Okay, so that works. Now, uh, what we want is, we want to display that joke on our page. How do we do that? Well, thankfully, uh, in Nux.js, we have another type of a function called data. And what a data is for is for all of your uh, local uh, data within this, uh, or components, pages, uh, uh, whatever, in this specific file. So here we're saying data return and uh, what we're returning is, so this is where we can initialize new variables for our project for this specific file. So what I'm gonna do is say dad joke as a new uh, variable, and I'm gonna say empty. Actually, in fact, instead of saying empty, I'm gonna say hello world. The reason to that is because I wanna check if my variable is working. So if I come back to uh, where it's saying that joke is, put in uh, double uh, quotes around it, uh, double uh, curly brackets, save it, go back, ref oops, refresh, and that joke is undefined. Oh, wait, okay, this data probably went back too far. Let's come back, refresh, and there we go. So, okay, it's working. So we're able to get our value from that variable. So what do we have to do right now is we have to save that joke into that variable. Easy. So let's delete this hello world nonsense. Uh, let's come back into this get that joke function. And uh, what we can do here right now is we can just say uh, this dot that joke equals to joke joke dot so remember joke is an object right and here we can see it's an object so we have one way of doing things first is saying joke dot joke if we save that come back here boom it works fine right we're able to see our result as expected however our code is a little bit let me also remove this console log our code is a little bit dirty right now. See, now we have to say joke dot joke every time, but we don't have to do that. We can just say joke. Why? Well, whenever we say const joke, we're just declaring the value. We're declaring the variable in here, but if we were to put uh, curly brackets around it, what we're saying is create a variable and get me a specific key from the object that matches the name. In this case, we have a joke, as well as we had few other variables, so I just did the console log, but like ID. So if I were to say also comma uh, ID, right? Uh, I'll be taking that specific value into this variable. And thanks to this method, I don't have to say joke.joke. .joke. If I just go back, we can see that it works. So this is step three 
uh, that we just completed it, and that is talking to somebody else's API. We just fetched a uh, uh, different result from somebody else's API. And uh, technically, right now, I can do whatever I want to it, but I'm not going to. All what I want is just to display it. OK, so that's fine. And uh, what we should be probably doing right now is let's try to style this, because it doesn't look the same compared to this. This looks better nicer, more futuristic, to out matches our standards. This is garbage. We don't like this design. So let's fix it. What we'll do is, actually, first, let me delete these links, because that was from before when we ran uh, the project. It generated a lot of things for us, uh, including a Tailwind package. So that's why we didn't install it ourselves. Uh, but I'm just removing things that we do not need. So in this case, we have a subtitle. And let me just take that and put it over here. Class equals subtitle, save, go back, refresh. Why do I have to refresh? Uh, ta da! Good design. Better. But could be improved for us. Because if, let's say, our dads, our users are using this website on their smartphone, it doesn't look nice, right? Uh, if we were to have like, uh, a smaller phone, we can see that uh, Happy Father's Day may be nice, but this is too much. We should probably control that. We should probably make a better design for it. So let's do that. Well, remember how we installed Tailwind at the beginning with this project? That's what we'll be using right now. What I have here is a Tailwind documentation. Uh, I'm not going to be using that because I'm time to time annoyed by that. But what I'll do instead is I'll use this Tailwind cheat sheet. It's very, very simple. As you can see, all the things that I need are right in front of me. So I'll expand these breakpoints. And what those breakpoints are is whenever you are using your website, you do want to make it user-friendly in terms of uh, uh, whenever they're using uh, display, uh, their monitor, smartphone, you do want to make it responsive. And that's what breaks points are for. So we can see SM, MD, medium, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you should know this stuff, right? You probably know those things already. So we'll be using that. So OK, whenever the screen is small, OK, I do want for this text to be smaller. So let me look for a font size. OK, there is a font size. And we can see there are a bunch of a lot of options out there for us. Let's try first with text access. So maybe that's going to be way too small. Let's try with Excel. All right, text to Excel. That's fine. And uh, if we'll go, come back here, refresh the page. That did not work. Uh, why didn't it not work? Oh, Tailwind. Oh, I know what I know what it is. It's not Tailwind that is a problem. Tailwind is beautiful. It's this right here. So since we're using this class, it's using raw CSS. Just delete this font size, save it, come back, and there we go. It looks better now. Let's see if I can get a longer text for us, just to see how it looks like when they. Okay, okay. So it looks good. Looks good. Um, it, it doesn't look too bad looks a little bit small, but we could give a little bit of padding to it. So let's say like uh, px-5. And what px-5 means, it means padding, x means horizontal, five, well, five points. Uh, five probably didn't work because five is not, oh, no, there you go. It's a number, so we're good. So it looks better now, right? To our design standards, text is, um. Text is fine, I guess. Let's refresh. Let's see how does it look like when we have a longer text. Maybe we can make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, I, I think it looks good. I think it looks good. We could make it just tiny, just a little better, bigger. SM. Let's try to use SM. Uh, SM. Save. Come back here. Refresh. Okay. Okay. It looks. A little bigger. Did it change even? Text SM. I think it changed. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, font weight, margin. I think it changed, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's been changed, that's fine. But now when we go to our regular size, it stays the same. So we'll have to fix that. How do we fix that? We just add an MD, another uh, tag in there, and we're going to say exact same thing. Exact same thing. Text dash, we can say, uh, I believe, LG or uh, Excel. Save that, come back here, refresh. Uh, okay, it got bigger, but not big enough. Let's make it just a little more bigger. Okay, that looks better. That joke. Okay, so this looks good. That looks better for us, right? If we'll go to like a uh, smartphone, looks good. If we go to a uh, desktop, looks good. Uh, okay, that's nice, that's good. Uh, what, is, what is in my console? Uh, that's fine, that's fine. Elements, okay. So that's good, right? We're getting there. We got all the important stuff working. The one thing we do not have still, if we compare with this, is this footer. Right? Because we, ha we do want to say made by tech dev pool with love and subscribe button. So if you hover over it, you click on it, it goes somewhere to subscribe. So let's do that. Well, I'm not going to be recreating that entire file, but I'll copy paste the code since I already have it. So what we have to do right now is to create that footer. The way to do that is right click on components, new file, name it footer.view. Uh, enter and uh, since I already have the code for that I'm just gonna copy paste that but since you guys do not have it uh, you have to write it out so I'll just leave it here like this for you right now so you can see templates the footer so you can see how it looks like um, here's the CSS for you for it as well let's save that and what we want to do right now, actually, is we want to call that footer in here. So let's do that. Footer. Save it. Oops, come back here. And there we go. There is our footer. Now, the problem is, is that it's somewhere on the side for no reason. And the reason why is because right now it's inside of our div container and it needs to be outside. Now, there is a, a golden rule when it comes to Nux.js templates. When you have templates, you must always have only one div, one opening div and one closing div in here as a, like, a, a parent of this uh, component, of this uh, template. That's why you can never have multiple. That's why you can see here I have an error right now. So the way I'm going to solve this, I'm just going to create another div around it. And that's it. So right now, this is my parent div. Save that, go back to my website. If I scroll down, here we go. There is my footer. Now, the one thing to point out is that right now out here, I'm, I have a heart, which is just an emoji hard coded. But in reality, the way we do it in actual projects, we're actually using different plugins to uh, use specific uh, icons. We don't just hard code as an emoji. Th this, this is just lazy work. But since this is just for the show and I am lazy, that's why we have to go with this approach. In any case, okay, so let's close this. We don't need that. We don't need this file. We don't need this file. That's it, guys. Uh, the project is actually good for us. It's running. Now we need to actually deploy it. And uh, I'm not going to be deploying this project. I'll be showing you my deployment on uh, 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 a different project. So let me just go back to Netlify here, uh, log in. Okay, so here you can see a dev pool. This is mine. So here you can see uh, this is the one I already have currently. So let me just click on it. And here's how we deploy it. So when you, you have uh, pushed your project to your uh, GitHub account, uh, what you want to do after is go to your profile, click on new site from Git, okay? And here you have an option if you have it on a GitHub, GitLab, a Bitbucket. So let's say you push to GitHub, you click on it, 
and then it will ask you to authorize, stuff like that. And in here, you should be able to see your project. If you don't see it, you just need to give permissions, uh, Netlify to see all of the, um, uh, all of your private or public projects. So here we can see I have only four. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that anymore, but once you have selected it, once you've done, what you have to do as a one more thing, if I'll go to my real project right now, if I'll go to uh, domain, uh, uh, sorry, site settings, uh, deploy and build, you'll notice that you'll need to write a few commands out here. And actually, that's probably something that's going to ask you on your third step right now. And the type of commands you have to type in for command, uh, for build command is yarn generate. And the publish directory is dist. Once you have done, save it. Uh, you can deploy it. And uh, once the deployment will start, it will look something like this for you. So uh, if I'll try to, um, let me try to redeploy my website. If I click here, uh, redeploy, deploy the site. So it's going to look something like this for you. So it's starting uh, to deploy your website uh, and uh, wait uh, till it's done. And out here right now, you can see that my URL looks beautiful. I, I'm just saying uh, Happy Father's Day. For you, you might have just gibberish. It's an ID generated by uh, Netlify. If you want to change that, you just go to uh, where are my settings? Site settings. Next, I would go to site, see where I say site name, go to change site name, and here just change to whatever site name you want. Now, if you will try to take Happy Father's Day, it's not going to work for you because that's my name. That is the domain that I have already taken it and you can't have it. I'm not going to give it to you. So what you can do is you can say dash one, dash a thousand, depending on uh, if people, what are the name they give. But this is how we also deploy our uh, project to uh, Netlify. And uh, once, so we go to deployment and we can see it's done. So it didn't give any errors. There is nothing out there. And if you have any errors, see I have here saying uh, failed. Uh, and then you can take a look at what failed for you exactly. And uh, that's it. Like, I don't know what else uh, to show you here, guys. Like. This is a very, very good result, what we just did. So again, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video. And if you're interested in how to set up your backend right now, well, I do have a video for that as well. You can find somewhere, I'll say here, up here, there it is. And uh, what you can do right now is I'll leave a link to it in the description below so you can start watching that, how to set up your backend. And I'm explaining everything uh, in a very, very clear way of how you can uh, set it up, test it, what is CRUD, what is REST, and stuff like that. So again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share it with your friends, share it with your family, uh, post it on Facebook, Instagram, everywhere else rewatch the video again. Yeah, just do all those things, you know, because, you know, that's what we ask for from our community. Uh, and uh, if you're going to be building something else, deploying something else, don't be afraid to publish your link in the uh, comments below so other people can take a look at what you have built. My name is Ardon, and I'll see you in the next video.